Hey guys, Crewman here. And last week I did a deep dive into the 4070 Super overclocking for crypto mining. And I learned that you can push this card harder than I have ever seen any other 40 series push. So I thought it would be a great time to apply my knowledge of overclocking this beauty and seeing if I can apply it to gaming because crypto mining and gaming have some overlap, right? Right? Well, anyway, can this card right here when overclocked, give us the same gaming performance as the 4070 Ti. This one costs $200 less than this one, or about $100 less if you look at the used market right now. So without further ado, let's see if it can. All right, guys, so some disclaimers. First, it goes without saying that while overclocking is very safe, I didn't even unlock voltages in this video. I just used the MSI afterburner sliders. You still need to overclock in your own at your own risk it can cause system instabilities and remember silicon lottery applies and i've only ever tested one 4070 super and one 4060 or one 4070 ti so i could either have the best bin gpus or the worst bin gpus so you may have to adjust your overclocks accordingly all right guys so let me explain how i overclock this real quick so this is the 4090 but this will do the trick anyway so basically what I did was I took my power meter and I slid it up to 109% because that's the max they would let me do. Then I took my fans, I spun them up to about 95%. I took my memory and I cranked it up to the max. And then I took my core clock and I cranked it up to about 214. And that was the numbers that I got that kept it stable. Now, obviously your mileage will vary, but this is how you overclock it. Like I said, ignore the fact that this is a 4090 and pretend this is my 4070. Um, the biggest thing is you're definitely going to want to slide the power all the way up. As far as the memory, you can kind of inch it down if you're having stability issues. But the biggest thing is the core clock around between 200 and I was able to get up to about 250. So like I said, your mileage will vary. So now that we have that out of the way, let's show you my time spy scores. So first, this is my time spy score unoverclocked 17 330 312 uh, and this is on a 4070 super and a 5600 XT is or I'm sorry 5600 X is my CPU and then here is my overclock score 18,235 so basically long story short you're gonna see that I was able to push this thing to about 10% improvement when overclocked which is pretty impressive considering i've not really been able to push any other 40 series over about five percent which in my opinion isn't worth it however i think ten percent is when it starts to get worth it as far as overclocking especially if you can keep them stable now one other thing i do want to note is that i was not able to run obs stable while filming the overclocks so i wasn't able to get those on film uh i have screenshots and i just have um the benchmarks running at stock settings it's just so you can see that i did record the clock and the core and the um, memory clock speeds to make sure that they were actually overclocked correctly and another thing before i go any further is i did game and all of these at, at the overclocked uh, settings and they were stable i gamed for about 30 to 45 minutes with each one and i had no stability issues all right so here's my test bench uh you can see it's Basically, a 5600X is the CPU. The RAM is 32 gigs of CL18, uh, 3600 megahertz uh, RAM. Mobo is an X570. I have a Corsair HX850 as power supply. I got a bunch of storage drives and some random stock thermal take cooler that I paid 20 bucks for. Okay, so first we start off with Call of Duty. You can see the settings that I'm using. I'm basically just going to voice over this because I don't want to get in the way. I want you guys to see everything I'm doing. Um, I pushed this one pretty hard and I ran a ton of benchmarks on this. And every benchmark that I ran overclocked, just so you know, is over. I ran it three times to make sure that there were no stability issues before I gamed on them. So you can see here I'm running the over uh, the benchmark and you can see that I have the core clock and the memory clock there. Uh, remember I said I'm only running this on stock settings as the overclock would crash when OBS was running. So I'm pretty sure I pushed these overclocks to about the limit they can go. But I just wanted you to see that so you know, like I said before, that I am testing it correctly. So you see here 
that we get about 135 FPS nano seed and you can see the settings that I use on the side and we get about 147 FPS OC so about a 10% difference now we move on to cyberpunk 2077 and you can see the settings I use note ray tracing is on and I'm using it at medium and DLSS is off I did not run DLSS in any of the games wherever possible and you can see from running the benchmark it looks really good uh, I, I ran this benchmark quite a few times because I just you know, I, I kind of marvel at the benchmark, to be honest with you. Um, and it, and it's running playable of 44 FPS, uh, non-OC'd, and you will see the OC numbers. And I play at about the same FPS settings on my 4090 at max settings, and I have no problems. Uh, I prefer playing at native resolution wherever possible. So we have 47 FPS, uh, non-OC'd. And then when we OC it, we get about 51 FPS, which is fantastic. So let's move on to Alan Wake. There was no benchmark. So all I can really do is just show you the settings that I played on. And I basically just took screen caps at the same area to give you the difference. And you have to have uh, some kind of DLSS on. So I just ran DL DLAA. And I wanted to just quickly show you the part of the game I was at. Um, just to show you where I got the screen grab. It's, I think it's the beginning of Act 2. When I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm still playing it, but I just wanted to show it to you. So you can see we're getting about 47 FPS nano seed. And then when we overclock it, we're getting about 51 FPS. So 10% difference again. And finally, we move on to Avatar. Uh, I just wanted to get one more game. And... You can see me just running the native benchmark. Again, same thing as before. I, if I OC'd it and I tried to run the benchmark, it would crash. So I don't I don't really know much about this game, honestly. I, I just played the first 15 minutes of it. It looks okay. Uh, it was just another title that I thought would be good to run the benchmark on. So you can see here, we've got a 6,449 with an average FPS of 87. When we overclock it, we get an average FPS of 94. So now that we've seen how this baby does, 10% additional performance in games, very much worth overclocking. How close does an overclocked 4070 Super get to a unoverclocked 10 or 10, 4070 Ti? Well, let's show you the numbers and find out. So this is just a quick comparison. I didn't go crazy on this one. Basically, I took Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 or 3. Uh, this is unoverclocked. Uh, we're getting 42 FPS on the 4070 Ti, non overclocked. And then I just want to pull up how it overclocked. Uh, we get about 153 FPS, about a 9% or 8% difference, which actually isn't bad at all. But it is worth noting that the 4070 Super does give you 4070 Ti performance when fully overclocked. Now, obviously, if you overclock the 4070 Ti, you get more performance. Uh, but remember, if we're going straight MSRP, this is $200 less than this. And even if we're going used market, this right now is still about $120 to $150 more than this is brand new. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was took me a lot longer to film or i'm sorry it took me a lot more longer to gather the data than it did to film it i didn't want to keep it too long because i didn't want to bore everybody but so far it's looking like this card the 4070 super is probably the best value for gaming uh, i will be doing some more videos on it in the future i'm going to test it against a 40 60 or 4090 but i have a feeling it's pretty much going to beat the 4090 pretty handily overclocked of course because the 4070 Ti is basically a 4090 Ti. And like I said, obviously I tested on overclocked versus overclocked, but I still think that that's justifiable given the price difference and how impressive the 4070 Super really is. So, so far so good guys. This might be the best value GPU of the year. We will see if that changes. Uh, we still, I still have to play with the 4070 Ti super and the 4080 super is dropping tomorrow so thank you guys for watching this video please like and subscribe i'm on the long march to 3000 i'm almost there i just need your help to get just a little bit more to get there thank you guys for watching again if you like this content if you didn't tell me why you didn't in the comments down below crew man out